You're listening to Campaign 2012, a podcast from the Brookings Institution. So there are areas where assessing the president's record is, you know, starts with a, a, an evaluation of whether he actually did very much. And health care doesn't seem like it's one of those. It's an area where his record is really quite dramatic. And the question is, do we think of it as a good record or a bad record or in what proportions? How do you assess Obama's record on health care? Well, you're absolutely right that there is a record. There is a major record. He campaigned on expanding health care coverage. Uh, it was important in the campaign because he and uh, Hillary Clinton were dueling about it in the primary. And then it was still an issue in the general election. And he said he would uh, have his uh, record, he would stand on his record of uh, passing a, a bill that a, went toward or to universal uh, coverage, and he did it. The Affordable Care Act uh, was passed in the Congress, not without great difficulty and, and long negotiations, but uh, it did pass. It is a major piece of legislation, and uh, it will figure again in this campaign because only Democrats voted for it. The Republicans uh, did not. Now, my assessment is the Affordable Care Act is a major achievement. Uh, we have long wanted uh, to uh, extend health care coverage to the millions of people who do not have it. It was a major national uh, crisis. And the second uh, and equally important goal of the legislation was reducing the long-run cost of health care, um, especially Medicare. Uh, I think the Affordable Care Act uh, does both of those things, although uh, there is certainly going to be controversy about it, and uh, uh, I think the president should stand on his record, should say uh, that uh, he had a major achievement, but that there are some things that need to be fixed. And, and how would you describe the set of things, we'll get to the things that need to be fixed, mm -hmm. but, the set, but, but the, the set of things that are less than optimal about, about the, the major achievement that the Affordable Care Act represents? Well, that depends a lot on your point of view. Uh, nobody uh, in politics admits to not wanting to cover the uninsured, but there are really different uh, views about uh, how uh, to, to do it. Uh, and Republicans find this bill uh, to be uh, too much uh, the government uh, intervening, uh, it, too many regulations. Uh, what the bill does is to set up exchanges or markets, that seems like a sort of Republican thing to me, but it sets up markets uh, in each state uh, where the, unemployed, the uninsured uh, armed with uh, federal subsidies can purchase uh, insurance uh, on, uh, on an exchange. Uh, that uh, is a, a fairly free market approach. On the other hand, it's going to take a lot of regulation uh, to make it work. You have to regulate the exchange so that it actually uh, uh, offers uh, the uh, uh, uninsured uh, good, uh, well-structured insurance plans. They get information about it. Uh, they can understand uh, which ones to pick. Now, Obama's gotten a lot of criticism, including from people who are sympathetic um, as a policy matter to the, the goal of expanding coverage and reducing costs for focusing on health care when he did. Um, the implication is there were, the immediate problem was jobs, this was a diversion from the task at hand in some sense, and that he both paid an unnecessary political price for it, but also that the result was that, you know, it was harder to get it done because people were thinking about, thinking about a, a different set of policy prescriptions at the time. Is the criticism fair, or should we understand this as this was going to be a battle royal whenever you did it? Clinton tried it unsuccessfully, um, and we should simply uh, ad admire the political accomplishment of having gotten it done. It was a difficult tactical decision, I think. Uh, 
the president, when he campaigned on health reform, had not anticipated that he would also be dealing with the worst uh, recession uh, since the Great Depression. Uh, the economy was in free fall as he took over in early 2009. Uh, so there was a big question, should you really just focus on that? Uh, put all of your energies uh, on uh, job creation and uh, countering the effects of the Great Recession, or should you also do health care? I thought he was right. I thought so at the time, and I still think so, that uh, the health care was an important part of uh, what was happening to the economy in the sense that as people lost their jobs, more and more people were becoming uninsured. It was a good moment to seize the opportunity to cover the uninsured and also to put in place a structure uh, that would gradually reduce the long-run cost of health care. And one thing he, he clearly, as you noted, failed at in this effort was the effort to make it bipartisan. Um, to what extent is that his failure and to what extent is that recalcitrance on the other party's part and to what extent is it a you know it takes two to tango and it takes two not to tango right um is it just a creature of our sort of polarized environment today well our environment is very very uh polarized uh and uh, i think there's blame on both sides that uh, the president uh, could have uh, reached out uh, further, uh, gotten more Republican support. For example, if he had done two things uh, that were prominent in the Republican campaign that he'd just come out of, uh, the campaign of 08, uh, there uh, John McCain had uh, advocated uh, changing the tax law so as to uh, eliminate or phase out the exclusion of uh, employer-paid benefits uh, from the income tax, in other words, uh, uh, making it uh, more uh, even whether you give uh, health benefits or higher wages. Uh, that was a good idea, actually, and, and has been in the plans of uh, subsequent uh, commissions. So the Republican, as best as I can discern, the Republican posture with respect to the health care bill, at least in the campaign, is to oppose it, um, to promise to repeal the entirety of it, um, and to talk about it as a one-size-fits-all, Washington-imposed, um, and a lot of other nasty adjectives along mm. the way. Um, how realistic is the idea of a Republican president coming in there and wanting to just repeal the thing? And what are the, what are the if it's, to the extent that it's not realistic, what are, what are the real constraints? What parts of it are, are you know, necessary for even a Republican administration to keep? It would be very, very disruptive to repeal all of it right away. Uh, the things that have already gone into effect are very popular. They were insurance reforms, uh, which required uh, insurance companies uh, not to reject people uh, for uh, prior conditions and uh, to keep uh, young people up to the age of 26 to allow them to be treated as dependents. Uh, and some uh, other insurance uh, reforms that broaden coverage. Those are very, very popular, and they have broadened coverage already. It would be uh, very disruptive uh, and, I think, politically impossible to repeal all of those. On the other hand, the reason that the insurance companies went along with these uh, broadened coverage and restrictions on their ability to reject people is uh, that they were assured that they would get more customers uh, when the subsidies for the currently uninsured uh, went into effect and when the mandate that requires people to buy health insurance uh, went into effect. And when is, when is that scheduled to happen? Um, the, the, uh, uh, I think that all happens in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the mandate has become uh, one of the most controversial things. Can, can you require people to buy health insurance uh, who allege they don't want it? Now, the reason for requiring it is that if you don't require it, people will just wait until they get sick, and then they will show up uh, and say, uh, I'm, I'm claiming my right to have health insurance. But uh, there's a constitutional issue which will be fought out in the Supreme Court. I don't think the mandate is so crucial to the continuance of the subsidies and the broadening of coverage. Uh, one way to get people to, uh, uh, to buy coverage is to mandate it, and another is to, to, uh, to bribe them to do so or penalize them for not doing so. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are certainly plenty of ways to do that. So a, in the next administration, you start your the section of your paper that has recommendations with the observation that you know, neither party should be understood to have all the wisdom on this subject, and the next administration is going to have to sort of draw on insights from both. Um, so s sketch out for me what, what, the, what the compromise is that reduces some of the tensions and improves policy further from here, whether the next administration is a, a second term of the Obama administration or a Mitt Romney or Newt Gingrich administration. Medicare is the problem not yet really addressed uh, by the Obama administration. Uh, and I would urge the next president uh, to, uh, tr in the context of reducing the rising debt, which is extremely important, uh, to focus on Medicare, which is one of the biggest reasons why federal spending will go up in the future, and not just rely on what is in the Affordable Care Act, uh, but to uh, work toward a structural reform of Medicare so that you have uh, two ways that the cost might get uh, uh, mitigated. Uh, one would be the uh, ones that are already in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and the other would be more competition, uh, offer seniors uh, a uh, plan, uh, set up a Medicare exchange, similar to the uh, state exchanges set up under the Affordable Care Act, uh, and allow them the option of staying in traditional Medicare or moving to a private plan that covers the same things uh, on an exchange. One of your cost containment structures is something that Republicans really have a lot of anxiety about. One of them is something that a lot of Democrats have, have a lot of anxiety about. Does that militate toward neither getting implemented or both getting implemented as a sort of a package? Well, I believe that it would make a good package. Uh, and uh, in the bipartisan commission that I chaired with uh, Pete Domenici, uh, that's where we came out. Uh, we looked, we said basically there are two ways you can uh, try to reduce the growth of uh, Medicare expenditures going forward. One is the one embodied in the Affordable Care Act, which is uh, find out uh, what's more cost effective and enforce that by regulation and uh, by reducing provider payments. Uh, that's a possibility if it works, uh, but it may reduce the provider payments too much such that we lose uh, providers, particularly doctors, uh, from the Medicare system. Uh, and it may not uh, work terribly well as a regulatory mechanism. We can't tell yet, uh, but we'd keep that. But we would also set up uh, a, an alternative, uh, which is to expand the options that seniors have who are on, in Medicare uh, and rely on competition on an exchange uh, to bring down the cost. Uh, that seems like a, uh, uh, an option that uh, would appeal to quite a lot of people. Uh, the idea of an exchange, after all, appealed to the president when he set up the right. Affordable Care Act. Uh, it appeared to appeal to Governor Romney uh, when he set up a similar plan in, uh, in Massachusetts. So uh, the idea of doing both, and one more thing, of uh, uh, 
capping the growth of the federal contribution uh, to Medicare uh, at some reasonable uh, rate so that it doesn't, it, so that it's controllable, so that the Congress can know how much this uh, cost is going to go up and uh, decide what to do about it if it's going up too fast. Do you charge higher premiums to upper income people? Do you ratchet down the provider payments more or whatever? So all of this, I, I mean, I take from what you're saying that in an, env in an environment in which e everybody takes their ideas seriously and is somewhat open, you could have a lot, a lot of additional progress here. But the last four years of of healthcare policy have not been examples of that uh, of that sort of bipartisan cooperation. That's and, for sure. <laughs> and I'm I'm interested in your sense of whether the there's particular reason for optimism that the next four years will 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 be a different set of tone to, will be different tonally on this issue, or whether or whether this is really going to be an area in which you have one party governance or the other party governance or stagnation and stalemate? We don't know, and the last several years are not encouraging. There, <coughs> Our politics has gotten more and more uh, polarized. But remember, we aren't just talking about health care policy here. Uh, we are also talking about budget policy. Uh, they are one and the same. Uh, the deficit as you look ahead, rises more rapidly than the economy can grow. And that, in anybody's book, is unsustainable. Uh, we cannot, even though we're a very strong economy, and even though uh, people around the world like to uh, lend to us, uh, we cannot go on borrowing uh, at a rate that raises our debt faster than the GDP can grow. That's the track we're on now. And the major reason uh, why federal expenditures will rise that fast uh, is the health care reason. So health care policy has to be folded into budget policy. And the basic reason for optimism is we can't go on like this. It is unsustainable. Uh, if we d keep borrowing more and more every year, eventually we'll get to the point where we can't. Now, long before we get to that point, we ought to fix it. And there is very strong sentiment, I think, in both parties to get the deficit under control. Uh, we haven't done it yet. We came close with the Joint Select Committee. We came close uh, with uh, President Obama and uh, Speaker Boehner's negotiations uh, in uh, the summer of 11. But uh, we didn't get there. But there is a very large uh, bipartisan group of people in the Congress who realize we have to do it. And uh, my hope is uh, right after the election, even possibly before the election, uh, after, uh, I'm sorry, after, uh, before, after the election but before the inauguration, uh, we might get a solution to this. Thank you very much. This was great. For more information about the paper discussed here or the Campaign 2012 project, please visit our website at www.brookings.edu slash campaign 2012.